Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, are you all shaved? Yeah, every last bristle. There's the last smidge of soap out of your ear. Mm, what's it to you? Everything. No soap? No soap for the sake of peace. Well, then that's my cue to get up. Look, just because I have to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning doesn't mean that you have to get up, too. I know I don't have to. I just want to. Ooh, dark and c- c- cold. Mm, hold your teeth in. Don't be light for hours yet. Get back in bed and go to sleep. David, I'm going downstairs to the kitchen and fix you a good hot breakfast. You are so stubborn. You bet I'm stubborn when it comes to you eating. Can I drive all the way to Long Island on an empty stomach? Yeah, who says? I says. Besides, I had no intention of it. I know, I know. You're not going to tell me that you'd stop off at some roadside place or other and the best and get cup a... of coffee to be had is in a diner the best cup that. of coffee to be had is right in your own kitchen my lad oh for heaven's sakes where's my slippers seem to walk off by themselves but oh here they are i know you once you get started in that car you won't stop for anything you seem to know my own mind better than i do of course i do much better so I have everything all arranged, darling. What's more, it'll save your time, too. I take it there's no point in arguing. None at all, absolutely none. Yeah. Dress warmly, David. Now, you stick to your cooking, and I'll stick to my dressing. But I still wish you'd go back to bed. David, please put a sweater on underneath your jacket, please. I am plenty warm. Now, look, there's no point in talking sense to you, isn't there? No, no point at all. Well, guess not. You men consider it very smart to brave the elements unprepared. Mm -hmm. It's the height of achievement. Oh, I can see that, yes. I can see that if you want me to go to Long Island on a full stomach, you better get out of that kitchen and boil them eggs. That's right. Throw my responsibilities in my face. You want some bacon? Mm, Just an egg will do. Long Island's an awfully long way. I'm just I think I'll get there on two eggs and four wheels, thank you. Well, they're already on the side of the stove, David. The wheels or the eggs? Eggs. Oh, and water in the pan ready to boil, coffee in the percolator. So all that's left for it is just to perk when you're... Mm-hmm. Does the coffee know that? Of course it does. I told it. Now, do I or do I not get a kiss for being so organized? Don't sidetrack me. Which tie you like best? I have to drive all the way to Long Island. The red, I think. The you red. better kiss me now because it'll have to last you a long, long ways. Oh, I think I could go to the North Pole on that kiss almost. Then get out of the kitchen, or better yet, get back into bed, and I'll get out of the kitchen. Nope, to the kitchen it is. If you're all ready, you can come along, too. You see, you can be drinking your juice while the eggs boil and the coffee perk. Well, you better give me a timetable to be sure I follow your schedule. All right, I will. You know we're whispering so we won't wake up Mama. Oh, is that why? I didn't know. It would have been much simpler if you'd just let me sneak out without all this bother. It's not a bother. It's a pleasure. Shh. Careful now. It's dark. Is that the middle of the night? <laughs> Practically is the middle of the night. You know, the very last thing I expected when I married an architect was to have him going to work in the middle of the night. As a matter of fact, I never thought of you going to work at all, now that I think of it. Is that supposed to be a compliment? Mm, in a sort of a way. Well, here is the kitchen. Oh, put on the light, will you? Yes. Yeah. Let there be light. And there was light. Imagine. David, get your orange juice out of the refrigerator while I get the coffee perking. You're so bossy at six in the morning. Orange juice is all strained, David. There's not a pit in a carload. Oh, what a pity. Oh, no. Too early in the day for puns. Puns for breakfast? I don't know if I like puns for breakfast. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now the toaster's all plugged in. Water for the eggs to be boiling in a minute. So you can put the toast in now. Have you been awake all night figuring this out? No, not at all. It comes naturally to me. Mm. Now, in go eggs. I'm starting to feel like a troop movement. There's no reason for you to be self-conscious, darling. I'm having a lovely time getting you underway. It'll be something to tell our children about. No, I'm glad I know the reason. The coffee's about ready to percolate. Have you drunk the juice yet? Mm-hmm. What have you heard from the toast? <laughs> Just going down, Mama. You're just not going cooperating, down. David. Aren't you going to have any? Oh, oh, just give me a sip of yours. Hmm? Yeah, it begins. Have a sip. Hey, that's that enough. Is... Hey, hey, hold. That's good. Yeah. 
you want me to break your egg? No, just put them in the egg cup. I'll eat them out of the shell. Okay. One, two. Put them in the egg. Two. Right. There. Now, David, tell me honestly, isn't this nicer eating it eating at home than in an old diner by the side of the road? I don't mind yourself? diners. The company's interesting. After all my work and planning, such gratitude. If this gives you pleasure. I'm willing to cooperate. Well, that's very decent of you, old chappy. Well, I am a decent sort of fellow, old chappy. Well, toast is toasted. Your coffee is poised. Mm-hmm. And smells good. It is good. Hey, it's getting late. I'd better finish breakfast on the double. No, no, no. Please don't hurry eating, Dave. I know, please. but I'm meeting Roger in Long Island at 8 o'clock. Please don't rush driving. Now, don't start telling me how to drive. It's awfully dark out, David. I bet there'll be some ice on the roads. Now, now drive carefully. I always drive carefully. And call me when you get to Long Island? I certainly will not. Well, tell Roger to call me when you get there. Now, if you're going to sit here worrying about me all day, I'm not going to be very comfortable. Do you realize that? Well, I... I... I, I don't intend to worry all day. It's just nice to know you got there and everything. My little ball and chain. That's me. No. Yeah. This is all I have time for. David, you didn't drink your coffee. Well, you drank it. But the whole point was to see you had a decent breakfast. You only ate one little measly egg. No, one little measly egg is all I wanted. No coffee. Oh, you're impossible. Where's my coat? Put on rubbers. I'm not walking too long, They either. keep your feet warm. Well, they're bad for your eyes when worn indoors. Oh, no, no, no. That's only a rumor. Well, I will not wear rubbers. No sweater, no coffee, no rubbers. Oh, you are so pig-headed. Well, here's your hat. You got one big enough for a pig head? My hat I will wear. It's big well, of you. I'm off. Oh, I'll come to the garage with you. It's cold out now. You stay in the house. I have my coat on. Go on, open the door. Go on, go on. Don't waste time standing around the hall. Now, I wish you'd stay in the house. Stay in bed. Stay in the house. You know, I'm really only coming so you won't waste time kissing me around the house. I suppose you'd rather I wasted time kissing you around the garage. Vicious when you kiss me around the garage. <sighs> Look, David. At what? Still no light out. Pitch black, freezing. Bet you nobody else is up at all. Except Fritz, who's halfway up to Hartford by now. Gosh, how does that man do it? I just don't see... It's time for little girls to be in bed. Not little girls who have little men to get underway. You're pretty smug this morning, aren't you? You blame me? David, you know, when I first married you, I was just dope. You were? But have you changed? Have I changed? Have I changed? Well, I remember when, right after we were married, you had an early appointment like today... And I got up to give you breakfast, like today. Mm. How well I remember. Mm. The eggs were boiled hard as marbles, and the coffee hadn't even started. Imagine. And you finally had to leave the house without a thing between your ribs, Except poor Except me heart. That's all, me heart. You see how you could stand such an incompetent wife? I couldn't. I'm a man of strong character. Mm. Well, anyway, I couldn't have stood me. You certainly were. And I'm a man of strong stomach, too. Doesn't have to be so strong anymore, does it, darling? Now that I'm so organized. I shall allow my character to relax and take a well-earned vacation. You do that, darling. I said it will. Ouch! My arm is stiff from patting myself on the back. I should think it would be. Stuck? Right. No, it's all right. Oh. Gosh, the garage is nice and warm. Feels good, doesn't it? Now skadoodle back to the house. Your duty am done. I... I hate to see you go, David. Well, don't try and think up things to detain me. Mm, you can say that after all I've been thinking about is making things easier for Well, you me. just keep up the good work, <gasps> darling. Hmm? Thank you. You have been sweet. Hmm. Drive carefully. Yeah. For the umpty ump time, I will drive carefully. Now get out of the way. Go on, go on, start the car. Co- I'm up against the wall. The keys? Do you have the keys, David? Of course I have the keys. All right, no need to be so snippy about it. Uh, you know, after turning on the ignition, David, you press the starter. Well, thank you for telling me. You're welcome. Well, did you press it? You stopped kibitzing. Yes, I, I pressed it. That's funny. Nothing happened. The car must be awfully cold, poor thing. Well, what's the matter? It should be turning over. Car turning oh, over? Oh, the motor, you cluck. Well, press it again, David. I'm pressing. Claudia, next. Shut up, will you? All right, I'm shut. I'm shut. I'm only trying to help you, David. Say, what about the choke or the throttle it's thing or something? It's not the throttle thing. It's a throttle, and the throttle won't help. Well, then the, the gas. Press the gas. Claudia. Well, do something. You're getting awfully late. It's not the gas, and it's not the motor, but it's... Oh, she's not even starting. 
Oh, oh. Oh, oh, what? So that's it. So what's, what's, what's it? Don't just sit there, David. Tell me what's what. The battery's dead. The battery? What, what battery? The battery in the car. It's dead. Really dead? Oh, poor little battery. Now, this is no time for jokes. I'm not joking. Is it serious? Uh, that's exactly what it is. Well, what made it die? Just burned itself out. You mean it just died without warning us or anything? The last time I drove the car, it wasn't even sick. I mean, it did not sick. Now all of a sudden, it's dead. It's dead, all right. Well, from what? Somebody must have left the lights burning in the car. Now, now, don't look at me like that. I didn't go near the car yesterday, let alone leave the lights burning. As if I would. Anyway, Are you sure? Sake. Of course I'm sure. I know when I've been near the car. You, you drove the car. You left it at the station, and you drove yourself home. You put it in the garage, so I never even touched the car well, yesterday. I guess you didn't at that. So I did not kill the car. I'm not accusing you. Had that look in your eyes if you're accusing me of murder. You can hardly blame me. Your record is so spotty. <laughs> well, Mr. Norton, now do you take the responsibility? I can't understand it. I, I never leave the lights on. I put the car in the garage, and I remember clearly pushing in the button. Here they are now, sticking out. Well, it's just one of those things you do automatically, like, you know, like turning off the gas on the stove. I always forget that when I've done it, and then I always remember that I haven't. Only you must have really forgotten. Yeah, I guess that's what happened. Well, I forgive you, dear. But now what will we do? I'll have to try to push the car out and let her roll down the hill. That'll Oh, get David, it. I've got everything organized so perfectly to think you're going to be late just because you let the battery Now, don't keep saying that. Besides, it can't be helped. No, it can't. Hey, what's this here on the front seat? Oh, that. Oh, that's Mama's fur coat. Well, what's it doing here? Oh, I put it in the car so you drop it off at the furrier in New York, if you don't mind. When did you put it in the car? Uh, last night before going to bed. So I'd be sure to remember and not make you late this morning. Wasn't that thoughtful of me? Very. Well, I guess I better start. What's oh, the David. What's the matter? David, when I brought the fur coat out to the car, yeah. I... Well, you see, it was already dark, so I... Yes, I did. Oh, David, no, I couldn't have. I simply couldn't have. Go on, have. go on, go on, go on. David, darling, dearest, after all my planning and the one morning when I had everything planned so beautifully, do you think I could have done it? <laughs> yes, darling, I think you could have done it. In factories and offices, in big towns and small, Coca-Cola coolers make it possible for people to work refreshed. You, too, can work refreshed at home by keeping plenty of Coke in your refrigerator. Bring home a case of Coca-Cola today. Then there'll always be a cold bottle ready to refresh you. Hey, Joe, how about coming up to the garage and giving me a hand with the car? All right, David, in a minute. Mm, it is cold this morning. Winter is really setting in. Isn't it, though? Uh, there are a few things I want to do about it tomorrow. Remind me, will you, Joe? I will, David. I'll be with you to help you with the car just as soon as I say that every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now... Here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>